around the world, shalom. My name is Christopher Oji. By my nature or by my character, I shall be known. And by your nature or by your character, you shall be known. God the Almighty created man in his own image and after his likeness. In other words, God created man to have his kind of nature so that man can be a divine manager of his divine projects. Satan has his own nature just as God has his nature. Anytime God plans anything, Satan with his evil agents comes to plant his kind of seed. God himself, who is wiser than anyone, has the grace to separate the wheat from the chaff, to separate the crops from the weeds. When God the Almighty comes to take his own people, his children, to his kingdom, the question will not be who is the most powerful in this world on the outside. The question will not be who is the richest in this world. The question will not be who is very, very handsome or who is very, very pretty. The question will not be who belong to this race or to that race. The question will not be who is fair colored or dark skinned. The question will not be who is married or who is single. The question will not be who is the leader or who is the follower. The question will not be who comes from this tribe or who comes from that tribe. This very question will be who has the nature of God. And this will bring me to a message titled, By Your Nature, You Will Be Identified. Turn with me to the book of Galatians chapter 5. We are going to start reading from verses 16. I say then, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 17 for the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. Verse 18. But if you are led by the spirit, remember the word spirit there is in capital letter. The spelling begins with the capital letter S, meaning the spirit of God. We are talking about the nature of God. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Did you hear that? Which law? Verses 18 again. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are evidence. Satan is the controller of all fleshly desires, you need to identify the desires of the flesh because they are the nature of Satan in you. They form the nature of Satan in you. Verses 19. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery. Do you have this kind of nature operating in you? Do you find yourself committing adultery even in your mind? Are you controlled by the spirit of lust, masturbation, immorality, fornication? Remember our message. By your nature, you will be identified. I take it again. Verses 19. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, did you hear that? Who is driving you to fornicate? It can never be God, but Satan. The nature that lives in you, that leads you to commit fornication, is the nature of Satan. By your nature, 
you will be identified. Whether you are a bishop, a prophet, a pastor, a believer or non-believer, those who claim they believe and those who claim that they do not believe, those who belong to one religion or another religion, there is something they have in common. Check the nature in you. Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness. Think about this. Uncleanliness begins within, even your heart. Ask yourself, is your heart pure or dirty? Is your heart corrupt, full of wickedness and violence? Is your heart full of murder, killing, stealing, and destruction? The bloodshed that is going on all around the world, violence everywhere, terrorism everywhere, killing, stealing, and destruction everywhere, wars and rumors of war, all begin in the heart. Check your heart. By your nature, you will be identified. Uncleanliness, lewdness. Think about this. Verse 20. Idolatry. Anything you place in your heart above God becomes an object of worship, meaning an idol or idols within you. If you love money, wealth, mineral resources, power, position, authority, fame, or popularity above God in your heart, all these things you have placed and loved above God in your heart will become objects of worship, meaning idols. You too will be called an idol worshiper, meaning you are committing the sin of idolatry. Tell me anyone that is free from what we are talking about now. What is the cause of war, violence, killing, stealing, and destruction all around the world? What have you placed in your heart above God? If you begin to magnify a certain sickness and call it a certain name and place it above God in your heart, that sickness becomes an object of worship, becomes an idol. And you will be called an idol worshiper, meaning you will be found committing the sin of idolatry. What have you placed in your heart above God? Is it marriage? Is it your age? Is it your position in the world? What have you placed in your heart above God? Is it authority or instructions that are wickedly given to you by human beings that are created like you? Anything you place in your heart above God becomes an object or objects of worship. One of the dangerous departments that Satan has created in the world is this department of idol worshiping. Think about that. What have you exalted in your heart above God? Your wife, your children, your husband. What have you placed in your heart above God? These are things that will automatically drive you to spend your eternity with Satan in hell. God has given several commandments. And the number one commandment that was given by God himself was this, and still this, do not worship idols. Check your heart. Who is an object of worship within your heart? This very question is very important because when God comes to assemble the universe, everyone in the world, to screen everyone and to put them where they belong, you will be identified by the nature you possess. Whom do you worship? Who is your object of worship? Let us read further. Verse 20. Idolatry. Sorcery. Take your time to look into this. Sorcery. 
Who are you consulting? Who is the channel of your breakthrough? Who is the source of your position? If God has placed you in power, you will use that position, that power and authority to glorify God. And this will not promote killing, stealing and destruction all around the world. If God has placed you in a position of authority, I mean, if God is the source of your power, your position, and your authority, there will not be anything like tribalism, nepotism, racism, killing, stealing, and destruction. Now, check yourself. No one can hide anymore. By your nature, you are already identified. You can only use your power and position to promote your source. Who is your source? Where do you inquire from? You are created to make God your only source. You are created to inquire from God alone and not from a medium, not from evil spirits, not from Satan, not from idols, not from marine spirits, not from witchcraft, but from God alone. Let us read further, verses 20. Idolatry, sorcery, hatred. Have you ever found yourself loving yourself more than anyone? Have you ever found yourself justifying your actions even when you are extremely wrong? Have you ever found yourself finding fault in what other people are doing? even when they're doing the right thing. Have you ever found yourself favoring yourself, your family, your tribe, people of your race, but hating other people from other families, other tribes, other nations, other races? Tell me, whose nature do you possess in this manner? The Bible talks about hatred here. It is no longer hidden, it's obvious. By your nature, you will be identified. No matter how you convince the world with eloquence, no matter how you convince everybody in the world with mere words, by your nature, you will be identified. Paul and Silas were identified by the nature they possessed when they began to exhibit Christ-like character. People around them in Corinthians saw them and said, look, we can see the nature in these people. They are Christ-like, meaning they are Christians. By their nature, they were identified. By the nature they possessed, they were identified. Now tell me, which nature do you possess? Nature of hatred, that is not the nature of God. God is love. God is not hatred. By your nature, you will be identified. Love does not kill. Love does not incite people for violence. Love does not promote hate. Love does not promote rebellion. Love does not promote Anger. Love does not promote impatience. Love does not cause division and confusion because love is love. Love reconciles everybody back to God. Love has brought to the world and to everyone in the world the ministry of reconciliation where hostilities are destroyed and enemies become friends. Now, which nature do you possess? Nature of love or nature of hatred? Our color, our outward appearance cannot be the criteria for us to be identified by Jesus on the last day. By your nature, you will be identified. No matter how weeds, I mean, unwanted crops appear to be similar with crops in a certain farm, when they are allowed to produce, they will be identified by their kind of seeds.
So, by your nature, you will be identified. God is in all ages gathering the entire universe to himself, identifying every single human being by the nature he or she possesses. No one that possesses the nature of Satan that can ever spend his or her eternity with God in heaven. And no one that possesses the nature of God that does not kill, steal, nor destroy, that will ever find himself spending his eternity with Satan in hell. By your nature, you will be identified. Let us read further. Verses 20 of Galatians chapter 5. Idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions. Check your actions. Check your character. Check your words. Check your thoughts. Do you not know yourselves again? These are the things that will be used to know where you belong to. Whether you belong to Satan or you belong to God. On the last day, the question will not be who belong to this religion or who belong to that religion. The question will not be who has this particular title or that particular title. The question will not be who come from this background or that background. The question will not be who has parents or who do not have parents. The question will not be who is rich nor poor. This very question will be who has the nature of God. Can you see by your nature you will be identified. Everything else is vanity upon vanity. All is vanity. Tribe striking another tribe, killing other tribes, other tribes speaking evil against other tribes, erupting violence everywhere, killing, stealing, and destruction, spreading like a wildfire in a dry bush that is burning. The issue will not be like religion speaking against another religion, leaders attacking other leaders, everybody will stand before Jesus Christ, before God Almighty, to be identified by the nature he or she possesses. What kind of nature will you be identified with? Nature of God or nature of Satan? You will not be able to tell God that you did not listen to this message today because it will be played for you. This is the reason why this is designed to bring you to a place of genuine repentance and salvation so you can have the nature of God living in you. Let us read further. Idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, did you hear that? Jealousies. What do you not have that you hate? Just because you don't have them. What are the things you do not have that are obviously given to people by God that you yourself hate and want to destroy? This can fall under this category called jealousies. And this is the nature of Satan hiding in people. By your nature, you will be identified. Outbursts of wrath. Did you hear that? You can just spring and say anything you want to say without minding the consequences of your words. You can just begin to say anything that can cause violence, killing, stealing, and destruction without minding what you are saying. Do you not know that words produces wars just as words produces peace? If your words are according to the truth of God's word, 
your words will be used by God to bring peace where there is war or violence. If there is violence on the ground and your words are full of hatred, your words are full of violence, your words are not according to the truth of God's word, Satan himself will use your words to produce wars. Can you imagine how many wars that happened as a result of words spoken by people? Go to the history and find out. Husbands and wives that are at peace can suddenly begin to fight as a result of words. Tribes that have been living at peace together can be torn apart by violence, killing, stealing, and destruction as a result of words. Now answer me. What kind of words are you speaking in a troubled world like this? What kind of words are you sending out to people in the sick society like this? A society that is already troubled and full of violence. By your words, you will be condemned. And by your words, you will be justified. Those who breed violence will be engulfed by violence. Those who promote peace will have their territories marked by God's divine mark of peace. And God has vowed from heaven and said, there will not be any single peace for the wicked. Who are the wicked? Those who possess the nature of Satan to kill, steal, and to destroy. No matter your tribe, no matter your religion, no matter your position, no matter your ranks and authorities in the world, you've got to repent now. Let us continue. Verses 20 of Galatians chapter 5. Idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, Jealousies, outbursts of wrath. The anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Moses, out of anger, struck the rock. And many lives were destroyed. You are the leader of this and that. What has your anger caused to you, your family, and to other people that you are leading? Moses, out of anger, struck the rock how many times? Three times. You have the staff of authority and you're leading and ruling. You are leading and ruling people. What has the outburst of your wrath cost to yourself, to your family, to your tribe, to your nation, and to people in the world? Remember, because of this singular act, Moses was stopped from entering into the promised land. Meaning himself felt the consequence of this kind of nature. By your nature, you will be identified. You that want to get angry and strike at any time. What will be the consequences of the outbursts of your wrath to you, to your family, to your nation, to the nations in the world, and to your generation. Think about that. If you have evil thoughts that are not yet put into actions, you can as well withdraw, repent, and God himself will forgive you. Remember Abimelech, the king. He had the thought of committing adultery with Abraham's wife. He had not executed that act when God reprimanded him and said, Look, king, don't touch that woman. She is married to Abraham. And he opened his hand and heart and said, Lord God Almighty, I thank you for saving me from this kind of sins. Thank God I have not laid my hand on this woman. If I would have destroyed myself, destroyed my throne, destroyed my people, and brought cause to the land. God forgave him, healed him, healed the land, and healed everybody. 
Now tell me, what are the outbursts of your wrath that are still in your thoughts that have not been executed? You can repent from them now. I have never seen where anger at flesh and blood and not anger at sin has saved any single life. Check your history. Tell me where in this world that one getting angry at human being and not getting angry at sins has saved life. I have never seen. It never existed in the past. It will not exist now and it will never exist in the future. Repent. When all of us appear before God, we will not begin to excuse our actions and begin to say, I was pushed. I was misled. I was in this association, in this religion, in this tribe, in that company. I was in this society or that society. Such an excuse will not be granted by God on the last day. This is a raw message that is coming to you from God. He that has ear, let him listen with an obedient heart to the voice of the Spirit of God. Let us read further. Idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions. Did you hear that? Selfish ambitions. When you are self-centered, you want to amass wealth for yourself, for your family, for other people that you know very well, even for the generations yet unborn, without considering other people's lives around you, you will find yourself falling into this section. Selfish ambitions. How did you become rich? What is the source of your wealth? If you are driven by this nature of selfish ambition, you would stop at nothing. You would eliminate anything that tries to stop you from achieving these evil motives. If it involves causing wars, if it involves inventing things that would destroy human beings, if it involves promoting lies, spreading false and fake news, demonizing people with false information, you would not mind. You would stop at nothing only to achieve your evil objectives of selfish ambition. People that are doing this are obviously known in the world. They are no longer hidden. By your nature, you will be identified. And this is one of the nature's selfish ambitions. Dissensions. Did you hear that? Dissensions. Heresies. Check yourself and check within you. You can begin to identify yourself by your character or nature. We are going to be judged not by our physical appearance. We are going to be judged not by our age. We are going to be judged not by our attire, but by the nature we possess. Which nature do you possess? Verses 21. Envy. Did you hear this? Many homes have been crushed and separated because of envy. Many countries are grounded and put in a perpetual mood of violence because of envy coming from others that are not part and citizens of such nations. Just because it's not your own nations, you allow the spirit of envy to drive you, to kill, cause confusion, violence, and the like in that nation. To you, you believe you are safe. No one is safe who is not dwelling in the presence of God. No one is truly safe who does not have the nature of God. There is no other name by which... Men can be saved except be named Jesus Christ. 
that is given to us. The summary of the name Jesus Christ is the secret of God, which is the nature of God, contained in one name, the name above all names, the name of Jesus Christ. If you don't possess the nature of God, you are not safe anywhere. Verses 21, envy. How many people's lives have you secretly destroyed as a result of envy? Many people have been poisoned. Many have been shot to death. Many caused divorce and separation. Many caused wars. Many destroy a lot of systems in governance because of what? Envy. Check this. Another one is very close to envy. Murder. God has not given any man any single right to take another man's life. Check your Bible from the beginning to the end. God has not given you any single right to kill your fellow human beings. Whether the person is from your tribe or from another tribe, from your religion, or from another religion, from your country, or from another country, from your continent, or from another continent, from your race, or from another race, from your political party, or from another political party, God has not given any human being any single right to take another man's life, another woman's life. Now, if you have the desire to kill, to murder, whose nature do you have? Satan is the ancient murderer. And those who possess the nature of killing, stealing and destruction, has the nature of Satan. By your nature, you will be identified. Which nature is driving you to cause commotion, violence, killing, stealing and destruction? Many by mere sending charts brings down souls to the pit of depression. Many by sending just text messages or emails bring down souls to the pit of depression. Do you know how many people that were once depressed that are no longer living because they committed suicide as a result of charts received, text messages received, Threats received, emails received, telephone conversations or verbal conversations received from people. And you are busy folding your hand to say that you have not committed sin. By your nature, you will be identified on the last day. Judgment is coming and every single soul will face God for judgment. Let me start from verses 21 again. Envy murders, drunkenness, reveries, and the like, of which I told you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. In the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, it is clearly written for us to Learn and repent. For all of us will appear before the judgment seat of Christ that each one of us will give an account of the deeds done while we are in this mortal body. Whether it is good or evil. If today happens to be your last day on earth, what account would you give to God? What will you say? Where will your character take you to? You cannot say, no, I'm just a small boy. I'm a young man. Or, no, I'm a small girl. You cannot say, no, my parents do not have money. That's why I went into prostitution. That's why I became a scammer, scamming people, defrauding people. Do you know how many people that died through your action? Let us also go to the other side, the nature of God. Galatians chapter 5 from verses 22. But the fruit of the Spirit, remember the spelling of Spirit there, is obviously, starting with capital letter S, is referring to the Spirit of God, not the Spirit of man. I take it again. 
But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering. Did you hear that? The first fruit that is being mentioned here is love. Do you have love? If you do, your love will care for your enemies, will even care for those who spitefully use you and persecute you for righteousness sake. The love of God in your heart will even feed your enemies, give water to those that are thirsty, whether they love you nor hate you. If you truly love, you will expose all evils and call good, good, and evil, evil. Whether the characters are coming from your family members, or from people from your tribe, people from another tribe, or anywhere, you will not conceal evil. Whether the evil character is coming from the society you belong to, you will not be able to hide sin. Love does not conceal sin. Love forgives and forgets. And love does not promote sin. Love forgives and forgets. Love does not promote sins and sinful desires. Joy. Why are you not joyful? Because of the circumstances. The only thing that people who do not have the nature of God lacks is joy all the time. Everyone who possesses the nature of God in him or her is always joyful in the presence of God. Peace. Take note of that. You are created to be a channel of peace where there is violence. Long suffering. You that want quick this, quick that. You are not ready to be patient, to endure, to go through some challenges in life so you can come to the level of maturity. Are you not seeing the nature you possess? All children of God possess the nature of God of which long suffering is one. Kindness. Why are you only taking care of your people and not other people? Why is your kindness being restricted to your own people and not to other people? When it comes to kindness, let us look at the way God does that. He allows his son to shine on both believers and unbelievers. That is perfect kindness. All of us are breathing freely. Whether you believe in God or not, you are breathing freely. And this free gift comes from God. That is another example of his kindness. Why are you allowing your own kindness to become a hypocritical one? Selective one. You select the kind of people you will be kind to. And the kind of people you will not be kind to. Who sent you to do that? It can only be satanic. The nature of Satan can only limit you from caring for everybody. By your nature, you will be identified. Goodness, the highest attribute of God is his goodness. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Tell me, if you are being pushed to the wall to react, to act out of character, if you are being offended by somebody you so much cared for, what will your reaction be like? Remember I said, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. For instance, the Bible says that God himself is faithful even when we are not faithful. What is the cause of divorce? Separation. What is the cause of poverty and hardship? There are many people that can be obviously helped by friends. But because when their friends remember something else that was done in the time past by the people they wanted to help, they will withdraw and say, he provoked me in the past. He's going to reap what he has done. If you are in power now, you said another people that were once in power insulted you. 
never voted you into power, did this and did that. Because of that, you distant yourself. Think about that. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. The greatest attribute of God is his goodness. They do hear that. Everybody is watching your behavior, your character, how you are handling the system. And they will tell you by your nature, you will be identified. You are already identified. You should be identified by the nature of God and not by the nature of Satan. Faithfulness. They do see another attribute. Gentleness. Look at this. Faithfulness and gentleness. How do you call somebody a faithful person? When there are obvious reasons for someone not to be faithful, and you see the person still in the realm of faithfulness, then you will stand out to say, this man is truly faithful. If you begin to quit because of circumstances, then you are not faithful. Stop holding your goodness. Stop holding, keeping back your love and care for yourself, your family, and everybody. You are created to care for all. That makes you a leader. You are created to love all. You are created to forgive. You are created to pause for a while, examine the consequences of your actions, and bring even rebellious people and sinners to a place of repentance with your faithfulness, with your humility, with your care and your love. Let us read further. Gentleness. Self-control. Wow. If you slap me and I slap you back, where is my self-control? If you abuse me and I abuse you in return, where is my self-control? Can we use fuel to quench the burning fire? It is practically impossible. Self-control is one of the wonderful attributes that constitute the nature of God in the life of God's children. See what the Bible says here. Against such there is no law. Imagine if you have all these godly attributes here that constitute the nature of God. The Bible says here, against such there is no law. That is why the book of Romans chapter 8, if you take your reading from verses 1 to 3, says, Now therefore there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. Verses 24, And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. God is in all ages bringing to himself a generation of spiritual worshippers. God is in all ages bringing to himself a generation that has his nature in them. We are going to be judged not by our background, not by the name of our country, not by the name of our religion, not by our position or title, not by our wealth, fame, or popularity, not by our continent, race, or gender, but by the content of our nature. We are created to have the nature of God in us so we can enter into the kingdom of God on the last day. Right now, I believe that this message titled, By Your Nature, You Will Be Identified, has opened your spiritual understanding to allow the nature of God in you to be built through God's word and by God's 
spirit. And I believe that this message has totally destroyed the nature of Satan in anyone in the world. Let us pray. Call the name Jesus Christ anywhere you are. Open up your heart. Your heart belongs to God. Open the door of your heart to God, to Jesus Christ and to the Holy Spirit. Call the name Jesus Christ. He is knocking at the door of your heart. He wants to come in with the Heavenly Father and with the Holy Spirit. Now call the name Jesus Christ again. Again. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I send fire from heaven designed to destroy Satan. Lucifer. Serpentine spirits. Serpent himself. And all the powers of darkness that hide in the nature of Satan in anyone. And I command you nature of Satan to be destroyed forever by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost, fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear! Fear! I send the fire of the Holy Spirit to your hearts, to your mind. I send the fire of the Holy Spirit to your thoughts, to your words, and to all your actions. And I stand against sins and sinful desires. Holy Ghost, fear in the name of Jesus Christ. Fear! 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 Right now receive your total forgiveness, healing and deliverance. Receive eternal life. A life without sin. Receive the nature of God in you. Both now and forevermore. In the name of Jesus Christ. I soak your nation and the system of governance in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I soak everyone in the world, all continents, the universe, and every department of operation in the world in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Let the nature of God begin to lead everyone. Let the nature of God begin to control people's thoughts, people's words, and people's actions both now and forevermore in the name of jesus christ let there be peace let there be love let there be joy and faithfulness let there be goodness kindness and generosity let there be self-control and patience in the lives of everyone both now and forevermore in the name of Jesus Christ, I leave you with God, with Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, I mean, with the nature of God in you, in Jesus Christ's name, amen. You are highly welcome to the family of God. No one can be part of God's family without having the nature of God. Now that you have received graciously, the nature of the Most High God. You are welcome to God's family. God bless you. Shalom.